Today I want to tell you about a proof of a theorem that seems at first sight incredible. It's a type of proof known as non-constructive. And the strange thing about it is that although it demonstrates the existence of something, it doesn't give a way of providing an example, a specific example, or even a way of arriving at an example. Let's take a closer look at it. The theorem is simply this. There exist irrational numbers a and b such that a to the power b is rational. A rational number, remember, is one that can be written in the form of one whole number over another, whereas an irrational number can't be written in this way. The square root of 2, for instance, is an irrational number, and this can easily be shown, although I'm not going to do it here. Here's a non-constructive proof of the theorem I just stated. It was given by the Israeli mathematician and linguist Dov Jardin in 1953. It uses as its example the square root of 2 and variants of it. And it goes like this. Either root 2 to the root 2 is rational, or root 2 to the root 2 is irrational. One of these statements must be true, because any real number can be classed as either rational or irrational. Let's consider the two possible cases. First, it may be that root 2 to the power root 2 is rational, in which case the theorem is true for a equals root 2 and b equals root 2, because we have that an irrational number to the power of an irrational number is rational. The alternative case is that root 2 to the root 2 is irrational. In this case, if we take a equals root 2 to the root 2 and b equals root 2, then again, both a and b are irrational, and it turns out that a to the power b equals root 2 to the root 2 all to the root 2, which equals root 2 squared, which equals 2, which is rational. Taken together, these two cases prove the theorem. If we assume that the expression for a to the b, with both a and b equals root 2, is rational, then we have an a and b that satisfy the theorem. On the other hand, if we assume the expression root 2 to the root 2 is irrational, then the a and b in the second case give the rational answer too. One of these cases must be true. It's just that we don't know which one it is. Nevertheless, the proof guarantees the existence of at least one irrational value for each of a and b, which give a rational result for a to the b. Not all mathematicians like non-constructive proofs such as this, even though they obey the laws of classical logic. The Dutch mathematician L.E.J. Brewer, for instance, wrote a paper in 1908 in which he criticised non-constructive proofs on the grounds that they don't provide actual values that satisfy the result that they demonstrate. It turns out that root 2 to the power root 2 is irrational because of what's known as the Gelfond-Schneider theorem, but that fact is irrelevant to the correctness of the non-constructive proof. It's also possible to prove constructively the existence of irrational values for a and b that give a rational result. For example, e to the log 2, which equals 2 in the case where a equals e and b equals log 2. Although determining whether root 2 to the power root 2 is irrational is much more difficult. I hope you've enjoyed this. Post any comments you have below and I'll see you again very soon.